um, as, as a young guy, I read Aurelius and Epictetus, and I was not into um, all the discussions of prudence and justice. I like the stuff about being tough, you know, mm-hmm. and not letting the world get to you. And that's yeah. that's part of Stoicism, but it's only like this much. Mm. And, you know, as, as the Stoics say, when, when you take courage or fortitude away from justice and prudence, it ceases to be courage. Mm. So, you know, you learn a bit and then you got to sit with that for a while and that becomes natural to you. And then you read some more stuff and you're like, whoa, what is this crap? You know, mm. there's, there's a good reason they call it stoic paradoxes yeah. because they, they went against our, our typical ways of looking at things. And then you use what you've got as a basis to understand the other stuff and you stretch. It's like, it's like learning a new language or, um, know learning new exercises you don't you're not doing something radically different that you've never ever done before Mm. but you 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 do learn something new and and going back to something that you're saying thinking is a practice Mm. so thinking about stuff we we often like we we sunder well there's the theoretical and then there's the practical i want to be a doer not not i don't want to have to learn all this stuff learning Mm. is is is, is practical yeah. and the stoics thought that as rational creatures we ought to want to learn mm. and you know I, I think this is something that we're still not into discussing like principles and practices but this this might be a useful practice for some people when you're um tempted to say oh i don't need to learn all this other stuff you know i just want to do what's what's going to work for me in this situation from a stoic point of view that would be a sign that there's something going wrong. Mm. Mm. So, you know, Seneca, Epictetus, wh- whoever we're going to think about, they would say, well, you know, that's fine for, for a moment, but if you actually want to, to, to realize your human nature, um, why would you reject uh, the, the tools and, and ideas that, that other people worked out for you and, and are readily available? And if you think about it in our own time when we're so incredibly lucky to have access through the internet to all this all this great you know stoic literature mm. uh, and, and and interpretations you know i think about the fact that this podcast exists right yeah, yeah. so 30 years ago uh this would have to be like on you know cds or tapes or something exactly. like that yeah. people would put it, listen to them in their car or, or you know yeah. on their their massive walkman so mm. so we're you know we we want to be how do i put it we want to you know sort of Exhibit gratitude about the the stoic teachers that we we, we do have out there mm. And again, you know the big three are, are always got to be the center point for that But let's, you know, let's not, a, not oh, only that's a, like I, I really resonate with what you're saying about like just the fact that we are able to listen to stuff like this like interviews with yourself But but not only that I was mentioning to my wife the other day It's seriously one of the craziest I can't even imagine how grateful I should be that I can go to YouTube right now <laughs> and look up any of the world's foremost intellectuals or scientists oh, or yeah, neurobiologists, yeah. anyone. I can look up anyone and most likely there's a talk that they've given or some like a, an audio book or anything from them yeah. where they're teaching the principles that they've learned. And I mean, I couldn't even imagine how excited like somebody like Seneca or Epictetus or, or anyone back then would be to know that, oh my gosh, look at all this information that we now have and that we can just literally at our fingertips just listen to it and, and absorb it. And, and, and that's one thing I really want to encourage people to do as well with Stoicism. It's like, you know, I would love to have like neurobiologists on this show and talk to them about like, oh, how does the stoic interpretation of how we make decisions align with mm-hmm. what you know now? And you know, things like that. It's like yeah. there's so much opportunity for us to not only learn from the stoics, but to also uh, take those stoic teachings and put them in a modern context and align them with what we now know and make it even easier for us to essentially... Yeah live by those principles or to think through them, if that makes sense. And, that, and that's that's actually something that's in consonance with, let's call it the spirit of Stoicism. Mm. Um, Epictetus or Seneca wouldn't, you know, they, they were innovators in their own right. Mm. You know, Epictetus brings in this essentially Aristotelian concept that he transforms, which in Greek is called proeresis, mm. um, which we translate as, um, you know, a faculty of, of choice or will mm. or moral purpose. And that that plays a really central role in, in Stoic philosophy, particularly mm. um, 
you know, as, as, as it goes through the Middle Ages and early modern period, they, they, they realized that that was something central to it. Um, that was innovation. Seneca himself mm. is, is an innovator. And they're not, they're not content to just ta- say, well, you know, Zeno through Chrysippus, they figured everything out. We don't have to, like, solve any new issues yeah. of yeah. our own. We, we often think about, like, the ancient world as, like, this monolith where things were more or less the same for, you know, several hundred years. But they, they weren't. They were a constantly yeah. changing flux of culture and new problems. And so to do that today is, is really to be aligned with the spirit of, of past stoicism, mm. I would say. You know, Definitely. Trying to find yeah. new applications, and uh, new media, right? Um, mm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah there's, so ma- yeah, there's so many opportunities to learn and to share these days. And, and we're just so lucky. And, and I would say too lucky to miss that opportunity is what I'd say. Yeah. 